It was like Elvis was coming to well, coming to the building, really. That's what it was. You know, the native son. It was the guy who did it before. It was the conquering hero. It was the return of the good times. I felt like the Pope was here, right? It really did. There was just a welcoming of, of a wall of people. It was all over the news. It was all over everything. It was like Rutgers, Rutgers this, Rutgers that, Rutgers this. The mastermind behind what was built is back. It was about time, you know what I'm saying? Like, what you doing, coach? Get you, get you behind back here. It's a testament to who he is, the passion that this fan base has, the people that he's impacted in their lives. I'm kind of part of something cool. You know, this is this is legit. Ah, it's gonna be special, man. I just ah. I tell you what, it's gonna be an exciting ride. Everything feel right now. Like for a lot of years it felt wrong. It's just such a great story of a team that's come from the ground and built themselves up. Not only in one football game, he's changed the culture for a college, a university, and a state. Rutgers University will host a press conference to welcome the return of former and new head coach. One of the greatest football coaches that we've ever had. He's done it before. He's got more experience. There's more of a spotlight on his program. Jubilation in Piscataway. You can already sense the change in the attitude around the RU football program. This campus is in a football frenzy. And now to come back and be a member of the Big Ten Conference, it's incredible. The 2006 Home Depot College Football Coach of the Year. An example of you You've got to take your hats off to Greg Schiano and the Rutgers football team. And the Thursday night magic strikes again! You have to respect Jersey because of the excitement that that man has brought. Well, it's Scarlet Fever here. Racing for the biggest moment ever. Greg Schiano is <laughs> the team to believe. The new era of national prominence for Rutgers begins today. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's press conference to announce the new head coach of Rutgers football, Greg Schiano. It's, it's been a very difficult watching the program over the last seven, eight years. As a former player, we got tired of losing and going to games and it's over by halftime. Whether you're a great fan, a player, the first, you know, dream you have is, wow, you know, would Coach Ciano ever come back? Uh, can we ever get him back? When you consider the situation that Rutgers is in, it was perfect for Greg. And it was perfect for Rutgers, more importantly. They needed somebody that was part of the fabric of this place, that understood all the intricacies of New Jersey, of Rutgers, and how to get it done. Touchdown, Teddy Britt! The problem a lot of people had was that it was just so painfully obvious, you know? If he wanted the job, he's the one person who had done the job. I mean, what's, what's the holdup? And, and I think when this thing dragged on, and you realized it wasn't gonna be a slam dunk, and then the news that came that it wasn't gonna happen at all, I mean, I think people were just shocked. When you thought it might not happen, and you saw the response from the state, from the supporters. You know, all the players are talking to each other. I'm on a ton of group chats. You know, everyone's super fired up and what's gonna happen next. Okay, the deal fell through. Who are they gonna hire now? It kind of got hot and got a little messy. I just used the platform and took the Twitter. Groundswell really doesn't begin to describe the sentiment that surrounded Greg's return. It was immediate, it was unanimous, and it was loud. It was definitely a wave of emotion when, when you see, you know, it might happen, it might not happen. Really, the entire state, there wasn't a place you could go where people weren't talking about it. New Jersey and, and really New York City only wanted one guy to be the head coach at Rutgers, and it was the guy that had done it before and had been successful here. Here comes the Gatorade bath, and the head coach gets it. It has been a season full of milestones, and it ends with history. You know, what was here before with the wins and the excitement and the guys going to the drafts and the bowl games and the bowl wins, you know, can be coming back. It united everybody, former players, fans, alumni, people at the school. It, you finally saw everybody united for the first time in a long time. From the start, you could just tell that they were not going to stand for this. Uh, and, you know, each day writing about it was a story that was the biggest story in, in college football for, for two weeks. He was the perfect hire at the perfect time and you couldn't allow that to not happen. That's how everybody in the state felt. It's the deal that almost wasn't. Negotiations between Rutgers University and Greg Schiano broke down after three weeks of talks. 
only to be revived by a group of fans and boosters. I can't remember ever an occasion where I've seen more excitement from our fans and our alumni and our supporters. And this is truly a unifying moment. My answer is always just, just look at the history of the program. In all the attempts to build a football program at Rutgers, and there have been many, in all the efforts to win football games consistently and get to bowl games, there's been one person who's made it happen. One person who succeeded to the level that people thought was possible, or maybe dreamed was impossible, I don't know, but there's been one person, and that was Greg Schiano. And the Thursday Night Magic strikes again! Rutgers knocks off number two USF! From those days to competing to win the Big East Championship to now being in the Big Ten, this has all come from the same person. He left and then we won the Big East Championship, but you could definitely say that that was a team that he built. He recruit, recruited all of us, sat in all of our living rooms. I don't know if everybody realized that or not, but all of this was the, the work that he put in over his tenure while he was here. Earlier this afternoon, the Big Ten Council of Presidents and Chancellors voted unanimously to accept the application of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights to join the Big Ten in all sports. In the annals of Rutgers football, gaining entry into the Big Ten is now the most defining moment. I mean, this is now you're at the top echelon. And especially at the time it happened, college football was spinning like this sort of crazy carousel. And you didn't know where or even if you were going to land at a place that you wanted to be. Rutgers being in the Big Ten wouldn't have happened probably if Coach Giano wasn't at Rutgers during the time, right? Not only the fact that he pushed for it, but the fact that Rutgers had a super amount of success, right? He did a great job of branding Rutgers in New York City. Manhattan's highest honor, the Empire State Building glows Rutgers red, a salute. Well, I don't think there's any question that building Rutgers into a perennial contender, a perennial bowl team, is what ultimately got them into the Big Ten. What I've heard over the years from NFL players who played for Greg, and even in talking to like Bill Belichick over the years or asking questions about his clear affinity for you know the Rutgers player over the years, it wasn't really the Rutgers player that he loved, it was the Shiano player. I think Coach Shiano did a great job with that program. He prepared his players very well to play professional football from a work ethic, professional standpoint, preparation, understanding how the game's being played, what's important, good fundamentals, good techniques, things like that. I think Coach Shiano did a tremendous job. So this is the 2015 Super Bowl ring with the New England Patriots that I was able to play with Deron Harmon, Logan Ryan, Devin McCourty. We came together and we represented Rutgers that year and that season. I got to play for Coach Shiano here and in Tampa. I got to play for Coach Belichick in New England. Very similar. So it's, it's a reason why all those guys from Rutgers went on to the NFL, because the way Coach runs his program is like an NFL team. Greg had been in the NFL, and he had been at major college programs, and he knew what it took. Greg has never been afraid to demand of you your best, and to know that your best is probably more than you think you're capable of giving. Your best, your best, let's go! away from home, you're out there, the guys on the team are your brothers, that's your family, and he's the head of the family. He's a great father figure, I mean, for guys who don't have fathers, you know, we, we look up the coach. Everything that I do, everything that I am, and everything that I'm, I'm becoming is, is our family. Everything we did in this room, in this facility, was to train us to be professional athletes, but also to be professionals in, in regular life if the NFL wasn't for us, which is not for everybody, so. Time to grow up, big guy, let's go! Get out there, get out there, Strata, you need it, let's go! There's a lot of places you can go in this country that you'll get coached well. There's a lot of places you can go get a good education. But, uh, you know, we call it man training. You call it whatever you want to call it, but are you getting them ready to be good husbands and good fathers? It's the closest thing you're going to get to father and son. Like, I was raised by my Aunt Keisha and my Uncle DeKille, and Coach Chiano is right there. Like, he helped mold me as a man. You know, I cover the New England Patriots a lot now at the Boston Globe, and. Devin McCourty and Jason McCourty are two of the leaders in that locker room. And 
they both would, you know, cross hot coals for Greg Schiano because of what they learned under him and, and, and how prepared he made them not only for life in the NFL, which is proven by how long they've been in the league, but life in general. They lost their father young, you know, and they, they, they credit his teachings for becoming good men and good fathers and good husbands. I came to Rutgers as a, as a skinny, 154 pound young boy, and, and I left here as a, as a young man. And I could really say it was a, because of Coach Chiano and his coaching staff, they really helped develop me. Really says a lot, again, about the type of men that, you know, the boys that come into this program and the men that have left this program and the, the impact that they're making on this world. Why do you guys love him so much? <laughs> Why do we love Coach Chiano so much? So I've known him since I've been in high school and he's just been real. Like when you, when you meet other head coaches, I kind of feel like, not to say they're not genuine, but he's not selling me anything. He's being who he is. And when I look into his eyes, there's not a doubt in my mind I'm getting a thousand percent real. Me and Shiano had a love-hate relationship, but it was like, it was our thing. Like, sometimes we just hashed it out. Sometimes we didn't see eye to eye, but we always had the respect for one another. We had a great relationship while I was here. I think now it's even better because I just look at different things. Like, first off, when I went through everything I went through with my family, he always checked on me. My grandmother actually passed away in 2008 before I even got here. He actually came to the funeral on Long Island. I don't know if he was allowed to do that, but he did it. My brother is uh, was a state trooper at the time, a New Jersey state trooper. He, he got in a really bad car accident on the job. I remember having that moment with Coach Chiano before I left, just, you know, the reassurance that, I'll, that he'll always be there for me, that he'll always take care of me. Sorry. One of the, the great things that I learned from him, just being able to observe observe him and the people he surrounded himself with was there's more that, to life than just football. It was about, you know, whether it was being a husband or a father, just how he handled his family. Here he is. How are you? There's no question that, you know, I think my opinion of him as a man was shaped by what he did with Eric LeGrand. I think that is the single most defining thing about who Greg Schiano is. Listen, this guy's not all hearts and flowers. Ask anybody who played for him at Tampa and they might have a different story, right? I get that. But what I witnessed and wrote about many, many times over the years in that relationship with Eric LeGrand to me says more about Greg Schiano than anything on a football field or in a locker room could ever say. It's being a part of another family away from home, basically. Being able to trust people like I did at home, being able to trust them here, knowing that they got my back, like my family has my back at home. So that's probably been the best part of the, my experience here so far with Rutgers, being able to trust them, knowing that my, that my family around here will be there for me no matter what, just like at home. Rutgers is playing Army at MetLife Stadium. And they do stop. <laughs> Eric LeGrand. 6'2", 275-pound junior from Avenel, New Jersey. And Eric was a tremendous player, and he especially was great on special teams. And he's running down to make the tackle on the returner, and he launches himself into him. Bang, like you could hear it through that stadium, and you heard the, oh, and uh, we were just like, who just made a big hit? Like, you know, people were, you know, kind of excited about the play, and then you just saw him laying there, and you knew that it wasn't, it wasn't good. I remember going up to him, being like, Coach, is Eric gonna be okay? And he just kind of like had his eyes down, and, and I said, I want to, I want to go with my parents to the hospital. And he said, You're gonna come with me. And we actually, I went in the police car with him. I just remember asking him in the car again, like, Coach, is he moving at all? And he said, Scott, I don't know. I can't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. And I think, you know, he felt responsible because he looked at us as his own kids. You know, when you coach these kids, they're your kids. That's the thing that I don't know everybody gets. You know, it's not pro football and. Or those are your kids, you're raising them, you're finishing the job for their parents, so it's tough. In the hours after that happened, and in those, like, first blurry, scary weeks, you know, nobody knew what was gonna happen, nobody knew what the right thing to do was. In a story I actually wrote and pieced together years later when Greg was finally willing to talk about it, 
One of the things was that Eric Legrand was just afraid to be alone. He was in a hospital room. He hadn't even thought about the long-term consequences yet. He just didn't want to be alone. His mother, Karen, is an extraordinary woman, but she literally couldn't be there every minute of every day. She had to go to the hotel and sleep and eat and change. So Rutgers stepped in, and they circulated this schedule around the football office, and people volunteered for shifts every day, you know, different hours, and they would leave here, drive up to Hackensack University Medical Center, spend an hour in the room, whatever it took, right? They would take these shifts. But Greg made it clear from day one that he had the overnight shift every night. You know, Coach Shannon would be here, do, you know, do interviews, practice, coach us up, and then, you know, leave and go straight to the hospital and stay there and then be back, you know, in the morning to be at morning meetings and stuff. And then I know it took a toll on him. And to only learn afterward what he was doing during that, during that process, you know, finishing practice, finishing meetings, getting in a car in Piscataway and driving to Hackensack, New Jersey. It's, it's about an hour away every night to, to sit bedside by his injured player, you know? And I think that that sort of shaped a lot of people's opinions about him because it was clear that, you know, in, in a time with college athletics when people don't, you know, players are disposable, you know, clearly, you know, that was not the case for him and for, for this, this young man who needed them. That's the separator, I believe, of all separators. It's like, this is bigger than football for Shiano. It's always been bigger than football for him and anybody who he brings around him. It's not always easy to, to live that. It's just not. You have a lot of kids in your program, and things go sideways, and things go wrong, and it's really hard. But like for me, that example, anyway, stands out as an absolute evidence that Greg practiced what he preached in that regard. And that he's, you know, and to this day, you know, he signed Eric to a one day professional contract with Tampa Bay because it was his dream to be an NFL player. And they remain, you know, as close as close can be to this day, so. Eric, you got my back. I know that, you know I always got your back. And if we don't, Miss Karen's gonna knock us both out, so I got you. Eric LeGrand continues to inspire his Rutgers teammates with an emotional lift before Saturday's Big East battle against West Virginia. I would actually put that number one and then maybe Louisville number two. <laughs> Last year, Rutgers head coach Greg Schiano told LeGrand that one day he would once again lead the Scarlet Knights onto the field. Today is that day. It was a very uh, intense experience because there were so many up and downs in the roller coaster. It really shows how how passionate Rutgers fans are. But I feel like that's the Jersey way. You got to make it interesting. It makes it more dramatic and makes it more exciting for us. And we banded together, started campaigns to donate. One fan put in 10,000. Some guy put in 52,000. I was sitting at home over Thanksgiving break. I think the news broke it one in the morning or something like that. I started jumping up, screaming. I think I woke up my parents. Um, it doesn't matter who you are, if you're a young kid, an old man, everyone's feeling the same way. Welcome home, Coach. We're so happy to have you back. Coach Shiano, welcome home. Welcome back to Rutgers. We're going to chop them, chop, chop, chop them down. Welcome home, Coach Shiano! Rutgers University will host a press conference to welcome the return. Some call it a miracle on the gridiron. Former and new head coach. He's done it before. He's got more experience. There's more of a spotlight on his program. Now he's back for round two. And I don't even know that there was another option. And to all our loyal fans, alumni, and supporters who displayed their passion throughout this process, sometimes quite colorfully, it is New Jersey after all, thank you. Your enthusiasm and your passion has been rewarded. It took a while to happen, but absolutely the right thing happened in the end. In some ways, it's the best case scenario because he arrived at a time when, you know, all the fans felt like they had contributed to it. Well, it's great to be home. I have a lot of thank yous. The incredible show of support, the show of our passion. That was awesome. That's what New Jersey's about. And that's what's gonna allow us to do the things we're going to do. I think you've got a guy that comes back and coach that now has seen the world from a lot of different angles in football, from being a head coach in the NFL to being a defensive coordinator for a national championship powerhouse year in and year out. And I understood 
when he went to the NFL. Like, I, I didn't have a problem with leaving this job for that job. To me, it, he had earned it. But he had mentioned national championships. You know, in his mind, the job was not done. I've never done anything in my life, anything other than to be the very best. So when I stood up here 19 years ago and I said, Rutgers football will be national champions, I got a lot of laughs. We got to number seven. I'm not saying it's going to be overnight. We know that. It's going to take a lot of hard work, a lot of great coaches, a lot of great players. But I would never ask a player to sit in one of these seats, go down in that weight room, go out on that field, if it wasn't to be the very best. That is our goal, and it will never change. There is pandemonium in Piscataway! He got the band back together. Essentially, was it. Uh, it was bringing back people who had success here, players who, like Taekwon Underwood, who, you know, obviously were a big part of that first process. Uh, and I think that's part of what Rutgers lost during, he has lost part of his identity while he was gone. When I talk to you, I look up and I see big Anthony Davis back there. I see Anthony, Kevin Malice, and Mike Keel, and you were down the list. We have great tradition. We're gonna take it, we're gonna use it as a jumping off spot. And we're gonna get not back to where we were. Let's not say that anymore, because back to where we were wasn't enough. So no more moaning, no more groaning. Now it's up to us. It's up to me, it's up to you. And I know you want us to stab us out, so it's time to get shot, it's time to go. Thank you for coming out. You see Rutgers people and Shiano people back everywhere, and I just think that speaks to an understanding of what went right the first time around. People always ask me, you know, you know, why did I come back to coach? And I was playing, I still had the opportunity to play up in Canada. And, you know, I think the biggest reason was, you know, the different people that were coming back around the program, you know, that I knew, that I knew the culture, that I knew the expectations. And you just started seeing it all pop up day after day, bringing back the regime, bringing back the original cast of, of, and crew that was here that made this, made Rutgers who it was. He had such an impact on all of us across the board in many different ways of our lives that they want to be back around it now and they want to see the impact he's going to have on the future generation. You know, one of the things I think he said to me during the recruiting profit process, he's sitting in my living room and he told me and my family, he said, you know, you're gonna, your son will have me for the rest of his life no matter what happens, no matter what he does. And that held true, it's still true to this day. I'm sure he has big, big plans. They've been slightly under wraps because of the current state of the world, but you feel it already. You just feel the difference. It feels like every day there's an, oh, here, Shannon got another player. And that's kind of been the way this is going. And it's, uh, it's, been, it's been interesting to watch considering what else is going on in the country right now with the pandemic. And, but still, he's getting the kind of players that Rutgers wasn't getting and getting them from the places he has to get them from. New Jersey, from Florida, you know, same blueprint that worked the first time. They're working, you can tell. One, as recently as I think late last night in posting a video um, that addresses the kind of ongoing racial unrest in the country. And I think that just speaks to a willingness to speak out, which I thought was great, and giving the players a voice. We are more than just football players. We are people with thoughts, emotions, and feelings. I know our culture says family trust chop, but we're not just saying it. You really are family. What he's going to be rooted on here is, is love. I think he has a lot more to share than, than winning football games. Not that winning is not important. We all want to win. I think he's got more to add to chapter two. It's an incredible testament, really, to what Greg did in, uh, in a decade here, and, and to me, explains everything about why, why leaders here wanted to bring him back. It was a feeling of, we're back. Here we come again. Everybody felt like their long-lost friend had returned home. And from that standpoint, it was a great day in New Jersey. I want to thank all of our fans, you guys have done an unbelievable job. Your voice was heard. And now it's time to go to work. This program is not broke. This program just needs a little juice, a little life. And we need you. Make everybody in the state of New Jersey know that Rutgers football is back. Together, Rutgers will be number one. Thank you. Wow, Greg Schiano is back with passion and vigor.